Today, the entire city of Oakland, California, was subject to what they call a general strike. According to the suggested chant list from the Occupy Oakland folks, the idea is strike, occupy, shut it down. Oakland is the people's town. Also, every hour, every day, the occupation is here to stay. You get the basic idea. What you're looking at right now is live footage, live footage of the general strike in Oakland tonight. Now, the idea of a strike is is usually pretty narrow. Right? It's a pretty narrowly targeted idea. It's the people who work at a specific place stopping working there in order to get that place to treat them better as employees. That's the idea of a strike. The idea of a general strike is not a targeted action against any one place of business, against any one employer. It's general. It is less about raising a beef with one particular target of the strike than it is about establishing that the people striking are all on the same side together. Oakland has had a general strike before. It was 1946, right after the end of World War II. There was a a sort of not huge scale labor dispute in Oakland. Retail store clerks went on strike against some downtown department stores because they wanted better pay and better conditions. There were picket lines. uh, There were some heated confrontations. There were people arrested. But it was proceeding pretty much as you would expect out of your average labor strike. Until it became not just a dispute between those stores and the people who worked for those stores, but rather a dispute in which the police intervened forcibly on the side of the stores against the people who were striking, against the employees. They beat us all out of the alleys, uh, pushed us with those damn billy clubs. I was black and blue here for months. The trucks followed right behind them, went on in and unloaded. Then they went back to get more. It wasn't bringing in strike breakers necessarily that started the general strike. You know, I thought about that a lot since that. We'd seen strike breakers. But the thing was, using the police force that we were paying taxes for to beat us off our own streets. The police don't work for the stores any more than they work for the striking workers, right? Police aren't supposed to take a side in a labor dispute. They're just supposed to enforce the law. But that morning in December 1946... When people saw police breaking the strike up, siding against the workers and bringing in the strike breakers, the general strike just spontaneously happened. Bus drivers saw what was happening. They parked their buses, got out of them and left them sitting there. People working at other businesses just walked away from their jobs. It was a spontaneous general strike, a spontaneous taking sides with those store employees who sort of otherwise had been doing their own thing. The general strike in Oakland in the 40s was not a big organized union-led thing, actually. It it happened spontaneously. It went on for two and a half days. Maybe this is apocryphal, but the way they tell the story of it now in Oakland is that in the 1946 strike, every business in the city was shut down for two days and a bit. The only businesses that were allowed to stay open during the strike were food stores and pharmacies, so people could get their medicine, And also bars, but bars with an asterisk. Bars would be allowed to stay open during the strike, the general strike in 1946. This may be apocryphal, but this is what they say. Only if they agreed to two conditions. One, they could only serve beer and not hard liquor. And two, they had to agree to put their jukeboxes out on the sidewalk so all the general strikers could enjoy the music. This year, Occupy Oakland started as one of the dozens, if not hundreds, of Occupy encampments that have sprung up all over the country to stand up for the 99 percent, right? Stand up for the 99 percent of Americans who are underserved by our economy and by our political system, which has been captured by the 1 percent. But on October 25th of this year, the actions of the Oakland police again helped turn what had been a sort of small, sort of isolated movement, at least comparatively speaking, into a much, much larger movement. Before the Oakland police made the bad decision to wage essentially a shock and awe campaign of militarized force against that little protest in downtown Oakland, before that, this was about the size of that protest, a few dozen tents and a few hundred people in Oakland. Since the actions of the Oakland police on October 25th, the protests have not only come back, look, they are now much larger, much, much larger than they were before. Even San Francisco across the bay, a very progressive city in its own right, and a much bigger one, does not have as much support, as many people, as many energy now, as Occupy Oakland does. And with this renewed energy, which again comes in part thanks to police making a very bad decision about how to treat this on October 25th, Occupy Oakland today decided to do what Oakland does. They called for a general strike across the entire city. 
Today, thousands of Oakland residents took to the streets for what were reportedly, reportedly by local press, calling these things the largest demonstration in the East Bay since the days of the Vietnam War. And in the East Bay, that's where Berkeley is. They know something about demonstrations against the Vietnam War. The Occupy Oakland demonstrators, along with hundreds of teachers and students and nurses, marched through downtown Oakland today, gathering at the city's biggest banks in a show of force that is set to culminate tonight at the Port of Oakland. The Port of Oakland, of course, the fifth biggest port in the country, one of the major conduits of imports from China into our country. The Oakland police remained mostly on the sidelines today. A number of local businesses, including some of those banks, just closed their doors today. Some city and port workers were sent home early today. Oakland School District reported that 18 percent of the city's teach for, teacher force joined the strike today. But again, this is not a labor strike. This is not a specific strike against a specific organization or a specific business. This is a general strike, which is a rare thing. And it means that it is not about taking on any one business to try to get them to change. In fact, a lot of businesses in Oakland, not just the Grand Lake Theater, support the idea of standing up for the 99%. Uh, for example, the men's warehouse clothing stores put up these signs today. We stand with the 99% closed Wednesday, November 2nd. While some businesses in Oakland closed altogether today, some stayed open but decided to go cash only so that the big banks and credit card companies would not be taking their pound of flesh from those local businesses today. But again, this is general, right? There is not a specific target. There's not a specific agenda. This is about saying the system shouldn't only work for the rich, period. 